The last graph that you have got to know, and this one is crucial, is aggregate demand, aggregate supply. You've got to be able to put these things together. You need to be able to interpret from different types of problems what to do with shifting these curves. Now, when we were just dealing with supply and demand, all we had was P and Q demand supply for one product or one industry. The way we get the aggregate curves is that they are a horizontal summation of all of the supply and demand curves for an economy. You may see that in a problem. A horizontal summation means if we lined them all up and added them all across, we would get the big curves. That's what an aggregate is, is some kind of a summation. So that's where these derive from. So instead of just P and Q, because that's like the small scale, what you want to make sure you do with ADAS is price level, which implies a level of inflation. So don't just say price anymore, it's price level. And on the bottom, it's not just quantity, it's real GDP. Real GDP or real output. You can do either one, they mean the same thing. Now, why is it real and not nominal? If you just wrote GDP, that can mean a lot of things. By doing inflation on one axis and real GDP on the other, real GDP means we're not accounting for inflation. This allows you to separate them so that it makes sense. So remember, real GDP, you take inflation out, and that's how we get that number. It's adjusted so that you don't have inflated prices confusing whether or not we're actually making more stuff. GDP this year will be higher than GDP in 1960 if you look at today's prices. If we want to make an accurate comparison in terms of how much stuff we're making, you normalize the prices or you put them in the same terms. It's just like apples and oranges. You can't compare apples and oranges, but you can normalize it. All right. So. With aggregate supply, if you are using the Keynesian model, which to me makes more sense, aggregate supply is going to have three distinct regions. It's going to be flat, it's going to be upward sloping, and then it's going to be vertical. What does that mean? In the area where, a, where uh, rather aggregate supply is flat, this would mean that we're having a recession. If we're back here, it's going to be a severe depression. Because as we increase GDP, we're not seeing any gains in inflation. So that would mean we have a lot of unemployment. Then when we hit the bendy part, where this is upward sloping on this graph, that means that we're seeing now increasing output and inflation at the same time. And when you hit the vertical stretch, then that says, wait a minute. We're not seeing any more improvement on output. We're just seeing runaway inflation. You don't want to be up here. You don't want to be down here. Your full employment level is probably somewhere in the middle of this guy. That would be reasonable. But you don't want to have runaway inflation, and you don't want to have severe unemployment. So that's really what this represents. A lot of books have gotten away from this so that aggregate supply is much more of a graceful slope. You can do it either way, but for purposes of illustration, I'm going to stick with Keynes for a little bit. Now, aggregate demand is downward sloping. And somebody asked me a while back, what would make aggregate demand more or less elastic? And this is the explanation that I came up with. If you have a lot of substitutes, remember, that'll make your curve more elastic. Let's say, for example, that this is our starting point for AD. And suddenly we lift our trade restrictions or we eliminate tariffs such that we're getting a lot more imports. That would mean we have more substitutes. That might cause our curve to flatten out a little bit. So you may see a perceptual question like that, I don't know. But just in case, remember that the shape of this could change in terms of being more or less vertical. So let's say you have a problem. Um, I believe this is an old one. 
where you're dealing with Japan at the end of World War II. Japan lost a lot of its manpower. There were a lot of people killed in Japan. A lot of the infrastructure was damaged from fighting and bombing. What that means is that for a situation like that, you better draw aggregate demand back here. Because otherwise, you're missing the point. The country is damaged. They don't have the means of production. You better show them back here. If, however, you're dealing with an economy with very severe inflation, you want to show them out here somewhere. Because otherwise, you're just not representing things the way they're asking for them in the problem. And wherever you have to put aggregate demand relative to aggregate supply, always mark your equilibrium. And again, we can see, as we move from this flat region up to the upward sloping region, we see that quantity is changing, that inflation really is not happening. And that's where we get these transitions between the different regions. Now, if you're talking about supply-side economics, what supply-side economics tried to do was shift the aggregate supply curve to the right. It's very hard to do that. Now, why would a government think that's a good idea? If you can increase supply, then what you can do is increase production and lower inflation. which would be a win-win situation for everybody, except that economists don't even all believe that this is possible. Very hard to shift production of everything. It'd be great if it was that simple. Now, we might try it with things like investment tax credits or um, corporate tax breaks. I personally think an investment tax credit that targets it more toward research and development would be better because if you cut corporate income taxes, you don't know where that money's going to go. But anyhow, some of those policies that are very pro-business are designed to shift aggregate supply. It's just that there's no guarantee it's going to work. If it was easy, every president would do it. They would all be beloved. The economy would always be in great shape. But it's extraordinarily difficult to do, and Reagan found that out the hard way. <laughs>